Hello and welcome to Lord of Facts. My name is Arthur. The name Arthur is derived from Artos, meaning bear. What's your name? Everyone on Earth has a name. It's a way for us to refer to each other without having to point at someone and say that person there whenever talking to or about someone. Let's talk about names today. If you're having a child and thinking about what to name it, be careful as there are rules and regulations about naming depending on where you're from. In the UK and US, we're fairly lax with regards to baby naming laws, with the only real regulations being that your baby's name can't be offensive or humiliating and mustn't contain numbers or symbols. Many other countries, however, take baby naming laws very seriously. For instance, in Denmark, there's a list of 7,000 baby names approved by the Danish government. If you want to name your child an unusual or quirky name that may not appear on the list, that name must be approved by the government, with there also being another list of names that must not be used under any circumstances. In Iceland, there are 1,700 approved male names and 1,800 approved female names, with almost no gender neutral names existing. With one of the INCs, Icelandic Naming Committees, yes, that is a real thing, rules for naming children being that boys are given male names and girls given female names. Names must also fit into the Icelandic language and follow Icelandic grammar rules. If you want a name that doesn't fit in with the Icelandic language, you must go through the committee or adapt the name in order to fit in with the language. The Swedish tax agency Skatteverka regulates what parents can call their children, regulating first names and making sure that no one can change their child's surname or their own surname to one that belongs to a member of the Swedish royal family, in order to prevent ordinary citizens from impersonating Swedish nobility. In 1996, a couple wanted to call their child Albin, which was rejected by the Swedish government, and they were fined 5,000 kroner for picking an unapproved name. In protest of this, they spelled Albin like this and were once again denied. They also tried to spell Albin just A and were also rejected because of a ban on one letter names. It's not just Nordic countries who are obsessed with naming rules. In New Zealand, names can't be offensive, overly long and shouldn't donate a certain title or rank. Some US states also have certain naming rules. In New Hampshire, names can't be longer than 100 characters and in California, names must only use the 26 letters of the English alphabet meaning names with accent marks aren't allowed, and you instead have to use these names without accent marks. Contrary to what it may sound like, the term nickname didn't originate with a bloke called Nicholas deciding to call himself Nick. Instead, nickname began as eek name, with eek meaning also. The phrase an eek name was likely misheard or misread as a nickname, which morphed into a nickname. At one point a common nickname creation technique was to shorten the name and then rhyme it, which is how we got Bill from William, Dick from Richard and Ned, Ted and Teddy from Edward. William is shortened to Will or Willie that is then rhymed to Bill or Billy. Likewise Richard is shortened to Rick or Ricky and rhymed to form Dick and Dicky. Popular or trendy names change throughout time. Popular TV shows, films, books, songs or celebrities can bring certain names into fashion or make others seem uncool. In 2021, the five most used boys' names in the UK were, according to BehindTheName.com, Noah, Oliver, George, my name and Muhammad. The top girls' names were Olivia, Amelia, Isla, Ava and Ivy. In the year I was born, these were the most popular names for boys and girls. My name was at 182nd at that time, so it's really gone up since then. Pet owners' favourite names for cats in 2022, by the way, was Luna for girls and Oliver for boys, followed by these names here. People really like the name Oliver. Names can fall out of favour for a multitude of reasons. Many names may seem well fashioned, associated with people of a certain age, or have a bad connotation or stereotype link with it, such as Karen. Other names, however, is because the name is so synonymous with one particular person. The best example of this is the name Adolf, which after World War II became connected with a certain dictator and thus fell in popularity over the following years, and at which point now no one in their right mind would give their child this name, 
Even though there are other famous people with the name Adolf, the name's so synonymous with Adolf Hitler that almost nobody uses it anymore. Another example of this is the name Elvis. One of the biggest reasons you don't see more people called Elvis, despite Elvis Presley being such a popular and beloved singer, is precisely because the name Elvis is so associated with the singer. It also doesn't help that Elvis was never a particularly popular name to begin with, even when Elvis was born. So there's not really too many other famous Elvises. The most famous other Elvis is Elvis Costello, but his name isn't actually Elvis and is instead Declan Patrick McManus. Gary's an example of a name that's fallen out of favour in recent years. The name was most popular in the 50s and 60s and has gone down in popularity ever since. In 2013, there are only 28 Garys born in the UK. Keith is another name, currently being the 1069th most popular name in the UK, with only 12 baby Keiths born in 2019. One of the best examples of a name that's become unpopular is the name Nigel. Nigel was at its peak popularity in 1963, when 5,529 Nigels were born, but has been steadily in decline since. In fact, people would rather call their children Lucifer than Nigel. In 2021, there were 15 babies born called Lucifer, and none were named Nigel. People would rather name their child after the ruler of hell than give them the name Nigel. Speaking of Nigels, on the 24th of September 2022, at a pub in Eversham, Worcester, called the Flea Sing, the second ever Nigel night took place, with the first being in 2019. This was a gathering of 434 people called Nigel. These Nigels came from all over the UK and from around the world, with a Nigel from Texas winning an award for furthest away Nigel. Awards were also given to the youngest and oldest Nigels, with the youngest Nigel being just seven months old. All the Nigels who attended were asked to sign the Book of Nigel, and the Nigels in attendance included DJ Nigel Clark, busker Nigel Ambush, singer Nigel Smith, and the whole thing was emceed by comedian Nigel Lovell. There was also a Nigel photo booth and a Nigel quiz. Non-Nigels were allowed, and there were badges to tell the Nigels and non-Nigels apart. The drinks on offer all had Nigel-related names, such as Nigel, Nigel's the best, and Mad Nigels. And the Nigels are grouped on a collective noun for a group of Nigels, a niggle of Nigels. The whole thing was set up by the pub's landlord, Nigel Smith, in response to Nigel's massive fall in popularity. And the night ended up raising over £1,000 for the British Heart Foundation. One of my favourite examples of a same name gathering, apart from the Nigel night of course, has got to be the internet famous Josh fight that took place in April 2021. On April 24th 2020, Josh Swain created a group chat on Facebook with a bunch of other people also called Josh Swain, giving them a set of coordinates to a field in Nebraska and a time and date exactly one year in the future. He then wrote, we fight. Whoever wins get to keep their name. Everyone else has to change their name. You have a year to prepare. He then shared these texts on Twitter. The post went viral, garnering over 60,000 likes. One year later on April 24th, 2021, many, many Joshes did in fact show up with pool noodles and fought it out with the winner being four-year-old Josh Vincent Jr. who got a crown and trophy. The whole event raised over $8,000 for a local children's hospital. Take a look at these two shapes. Which one is Booba and which one is Kiki? Chances are you named Booba the round blobby one and Kiki the more spiky one. We also do the same thing with human faces and names. This isn't surprising, but what is, is that it can often be right. Studies have found that when given a multiple choice, people are able to guess someone's name from their face at a greater rate than would be expected from chance or random guesswork alone. Surprisingly, people's faces are actually more likely to match up with what other people think their name looks like, possibly due to the fact that parents may subconsciously prefer names that fit their own faces. It's also been shown that names and faces that are perceived to match are liked more 
than those that don't. Nominative determinism is a phenomenon in which people's names line up with their careers or lifestyle. For instance, there are more dentists called Dennis or Denise than you would expect given how common that name is. Also people like Usain Bolt, the fastest man alive, Thomas Crapper, who pioneered the toilet, and the poet William Wordsworth. Other examples include neurologist Russell Brame, former Chief Justice of England and Wales Igor Judge, investment banker Rich Ritchie, lawyer Sue Yu, Delhi manager Laura Hamm, and philosopher John Wisdom. In addition, there's a neurology book written by a one Lord Brain, and a book about the proper care of tarantulas by Anne Webb. In the 1990s, new scientists wrote an article about this phenomenon using examples such as a polar exploration book by Daniel Snowman, an incontinence article by Splat and Whedon, and a subterranean guide to London by Richard Trench. Names like these are called aptronyms. A potential explanation behind this could be how people are predisposed to like people, things, jobs or places that have similar names to them. People using dating apps are more likely to swipe right on people with similar names to them and there are more Louis in St Louis, Georgias in Georgia and Jacks in Jacksonville than would be expected randomly. Although this could also be people naming their children after the place they're born. As you probably know, surnames were originally occupational and came from the job someone did. If you were called Smith, your ancestors likely would have been some kind of Smith. This could explain some degree of nominative determinism for surnames. All of this could just as easily be a coincidence as there are just as many people who have done the opposite of what their name suggests, such as Archbishop Cardinal Jamie Singh. And there's also much more people with names that have no relation to their job whatsoever. If you ask me, there's probably an element of truth to both theories. Many people may subconsciously be drawn to careers that match their name, but equally so, these examples are cherry-picked from many examples. What do you think? And thanks for watching.